so i'm just going to give you an overview because it's very difficult to make you learn over eurodynamics uh, in such a short time span so what is eurodynamics the, by definition from international continent society it allows uh, us to uh, do a direct assessment of lower urinary tract function by the measurement of relevant physiological parameters so this is the definition we must know what is the difference between the voiding pattern of men and women uh, it's a learned behavior uh, which is achieved at 18 to 36 of months of age uh, men voids primarily by detrusor contraction why because their urethra is quite long and narrow at many parts so they need a very good detrusor contraction to void unlike women because their urethra is quite petulous short only 4 cm so if they are able to do a complete relaxation of their urethra they don't need a very strong detrusor contraction so they are pelvic floor voider this is the basic difference that will that will help us in even interpreting the urodynamic results now uh, you just know the normal physiology we all know that there are two phases of bladder uh, you know and uh, one is the storage phase where the bladder filling occurs and other one is the voiding phase so during the storage you can see uh, the bladder pressure is maintained at a very low level because kidney is filling the bladder drop by drop and so the pressure will typically remain below 10 cm of water if you are using water fill you uh, know your dynamics so uh, because the detrusor is completely relaxed and because the urethra is closed so urethral resistance would be the maximum and i will show you in later side just to see the emg so urethral resistance will gradually increase as the bladder will fill more while during the voiding phase what will occur uh, because you now now need to void so what will first occur so the bladder wall tension causes increased sensation so that sensation is goes to your brain brain signals back to bladder to empty what will first occur urethra will relax first and after that the tuser muscle contraction occur and then urine outflow will happen so this is the complete physiology now what are the dysfunction of as you can see whatever there would be a problem of storage dysfunction could be there that will result if bladder will start contracting beforehand overactive bladder detrusor instability or if on cuffing on raised abdominal pressure urethral resistance is decreasing and urethra is giving way then stress incontinence will occur in emptying phase or in voiding during voiding it could be that detrusor is not able to contract with the pressure then probably there would be voiding dysfunction in complete emptying you can say hypoactive detrusor muscle or it could be that it's contracting but your urethra is not able to relax that will be a dyssynergia you have seen the diseases where these things occur so our job in urodynamics is to confirm the thing through this in so indication when the diagnosis remains uncertain after history and physical examination when the symptoms don't correlate with your physical findings so in any kind of doubt once you are not sure about the diagnosis after failed previous treatment specifically if it is surgical so it's better to if you are planning for a surgery a repeat surgery because it's a not a temporary thing surgical procedures are always the permanent thing so that's why you should confirm the diagnosis early consideration should be done in neurogenic voiding dysfunction history of radical pelvic surgery and pelvic radiation and those at the risk of upper urinary tract deterioration so i was the part of this usi guidelines we have um, made uh, for our indian patients and almost the same indications are there and uh, though they have uh, specifically told because we don't have your dynamic machines everywhere so do not perform invasive your dynamic testing uh, before initiating non invasive treatment so that's the important thing that you can have simple things a uroflow a pre void and post void assessment at least these things should be done uh, once you just want to do a kind of temporary treatment now um, i'm just skipping this thing the aims is to reproduce the patient symptoms so very very important few points are here that uh, it's it's for the it's for the physiology of the bladder so you have to try to simulate the same surrounding same things which patient feel uh, 
face at their home, the same kind of thing. So uh, I will let, let you la uh, know later on how to do that. And your selection of the patient should be very appropriate. You should have in mind what questions you are going to answer after having your dynamics. Don't say that yes, your dynamics happened and now you are not able to interpret uh, the suddenly you see the some kind of you know um, findings are there and you are not able to explain. So this should not be done. You sh should know what you want to know from your dynamics, why you are getting your dynamics done and how to interpret the things. Now what, uh, what uh, uh, all comes under uh, eurodynamics? Euroflow, simple Euroflow you know. Uh, so this is the machine you must have seen. Uh, the, it's a normal toilet seat, the only difference is this uh, beaker which is actually the calculator which will calculate everything and will give you. So these are the parts, base plate, beaker, funnel and seat. So uh, there are many types of uh, Euroflow meter. Um, the, page, the male patients usually do it by standing but female patients must sit and uh, uh, the most important thing while doing Euroflow meter patients should be left alone. Patients should be asked that whether she was able to void in the similar manner as she was doing at home. This is very very important because in Indian patients sometimes they require squatting position so you have to change the sitting pattern as well. So um, it will be processed and you will have a report. So the report would be like this. So you can see uh, there are few things which are noted like how was the flow rate. Uh, so you have to see the maximum and average both and also the volume she voided, the time taken in voiding and usually it is combined with the bladder scan where you can see what is left inside after the Euroflow. It's very important because um, you know if you're just doing PVR you don't know the pre-void then it's not uh, actually accurate because patient might have a PVR of 100 but if it is with 700 then it's okay but if it is with 150 or 200 then it is significant. So you can see this is a normal euro flow. Uh, you can see the parameters. Now this is the difference. So here you can see there are, this is typically a stacked keto pa pattern where probably patient using abdominal pressure to void or it could be that probably her urethra is not able to relax. So these are the patients where you need further investigation why this pattern is there. Intermittent uh, flow is there. And this is, here you can see that patient is not able to, you know, generate a good reducer pressure either or it is a complete outlet resistance. So that's, these are the patients where you need further evaluation. So multi-channel urodynamics, uh, here comes the role. So what is multi-channel urodynamics? So you, here you can see that pressure and sensation in the bladder are actually, uh, we are going to measure. So there would be a catheter which is put inside the bladder which will measure the pressure vesicle because it will have the pressure abdominal along with this thing. So what you have to do that you have to measure the pressure abdomen um, separately by putting a catheter into the rectum. Then you have to subtract it from the total pressure vesicle then only you will get the pressure detrusor. As I have shown in example here the vesicle pressure is 20, abdominal is 15 then the pressure detrusor would be 5. So this is a graph. So uh, somebody will ask what is the need of you know calculating pressure abdominal and uh, doing subtracting it. So here you can see why it is required. So here you can see, sorry I, I think pointer is not working. Uh, so in the above graph that uh, the blue one is the pressure vesicle and this is the flow. So what do you think? After looking it, the flow is so good. But once you will see uh, what is the difference, now see the difference. So patient voided this volume just using the abdominal pressure. There is no pressure detrusor. So th that's why it is very, very important. How will you know that whether bladder is working well or not? That's why it's done. Now EMG. Uh, so the, what is the role of EMG? So uh, the thing is EMG, uh, you are actually knowing the activity of urethral sphincter. So we cannot directly assess the urethral sphincter and um, the you know those electrodes which are uh, used to directly assess are quite painful. That's why we uh, use these kinds of um, uh, you know surface electrode which are actually um, 
uh, kept on both sides of the anal uh, sphincter and in this way you indirectly uh, you know measure the activity of urethral sphincter. So these are the patch electrode because nittle electrode are painful and that's why it's not commonly used and difficult to place as well. So now you can see here very clearly with filling phase uh, here you can see that gradually the urethral resistance is increasing that's why uh, the sphincter activity is increasing as soon as the bladder is filling. Here is the point where permission of void is being given you can see the flow and that's why sphincter got relaxed completely. So you can appreciate this thing so that is the normal EMG findings. Now systometry that's the difference Euroflow only voiding phase you are actually um, you know uh, judging but in systometry you can judge the filling phase as well that's why you maintain a record graphical record of intravesical intraabdominal pressure there are various things which you can uh, judge from this thing. So uh, electromyography I have already explained the pressure flow study is difference between the voiding systometry and pressure flow is that in pressure flow you are actually combining the CMG with the voiding phase. Now few more things because even if you are not doing you are sending your patient for urodynamics you must know what are the uh, important things before you know asking for the urodynamics. So patient should be in favorable surroundings I already explained to you. Uh, if patient is on indwelling catheter uh, it's be better to defer it for a while uh, to regain patient uh, normal uh, you know uh, bladder function. UTI it shouldn't be done it should be treated first if recent cystoscopy any procedure has been done on the bladder it's better to defer the procedure of urodynamics. The medication impacting the bladder so you have to see the T half of that medication so we, uh, you have to stop the medication like usually 3-4 days before the performing the thing and impact it that's very important I always ask my patient whether you are able to you know empty your stool completely or not otherwise give us some kind of laxative or something before the procedure because if patient is not able to do that it's very difficult to put the rectal catheter the findings won't be good and sometimes patient might pass a stool while having the test itself. Routine prophylactic antibiotic it's controversial but usually we give a single injectable antibiotic before the test. Huh, the bladder should be emptied of course at the start of the test. Uh, so filling is done through a pump I am not going into detail of these things because you know um, uh, why we do artificial filling because physiological filling uh, take a lot of time so um, there are some tests which are done with that. So filling rate is typically should be 10% of the uh, patient's uh, functional bladder capacity. So it's be better to maintain a bladder diary beforehand to know the functional bladder capacity. Uh, it can be done in any position usually females are avoiding at sitting position we does it in sitting position and smaller the catheter better would be the readings and we use the water charge catheter these are the catheter double lumen catheter used for the urethra and rectal catheter with a balloon and a slight nick. So just this is to show how to you know um, uh, link all those catheters and everything to with the machine I'm not going into that detail a quality check is very important I told last time uh, whosoever was sitting with me that quality check uh, where you have to see ask the patient to cuff and the their deflection between the vesicle pressure vesicle abdominal should be the spike should be same and there shouldn't be any deflection at the pressure detrusor level if it is occurring that's mean your cat there is some problem with your catheters you need to flush there would be a bubble or something would be there so you have to recheck that. Even the cuff should be done after the ending the test as well to see whether the at, during the voiding uh, phase the catheter, uh, catheter was misplaced. So, so you have to just know the sensations I am not going into detail the first sensation should first desire to void you can actually read all these things these uh, all are available into the literature so these are the four sensations first first sensation, first desire, normal sensation and strong desire. There is a typical way of asking patient in your local language you can ask patient and then urgency. See, normally capacity would be under be, between the range of 200, 600 sensations. Usually I will tell you what are the ranges like you can see here. Uh, so normal you know normal desire usually come at a range of around 250 the first desire at uh, 150. But if it is uh, before that, that means that probably patients having uh, hypersensitivity. 
the diffuser stability as i told the pressure will maintain below 10 cm of water if it is having uh, you know spikes in between that's mean probably the diffuser is contracting in between and the usually uh, the uh, you know pressure diffuser we don't need a very strong bladder contraction to void it's around 20 cm and flow rates are also in the range of 20 um, ml per second so leak point pressures i am not going to into detail why i am just telling you that urethral pressure profilometry because now a lot of controversy regarding these things uh because uh, it has been seen uh, it is not very uh, well correlated with the results of the surgeries so uh, whether it is upp or whether it is mucp now it has most of the guidelines are uh, show, uh, saying that you don't need to use them uh, routinely so that's the scenario so now coming to the end of the lecture this is the standard uralmic signal you can see um uh, pointer hona chahiye tha p vesicle you can see uh, regularly the cuff test has been done and pressure diffuser is not having a you know a significant spike with that and how to differentiate you can see that there is a permission to void last at the last and then only uh, the diffuser pressure is rising and we have we have to specifically ask patient not to use the abdominal muscles otherwise it will give a false result even the emg won't be very uh, clear so that's why uh, you can see that is a good diffuser contraction here it is started after the permission to void that's mean it's not the diffuser instability suppose it is occurring before that you have not given the permission it's mean the it's the terminal diffuser instability so it is the way of differentiating now um, anybody from the audience what is the diagnosis quickly we ha i have to end the lecture so this is this is the leakage i have pointed out um, it, you, it it might not be visible uh, far off it's with it is with the cuff please 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 sui very well so it's so easy na you you can make the diagnosis so it's nothing else there is no diffuser instability nothing and voiding phase is also good though there is not a very good diffuser contraction but i told you females are pelvic floor voiders so don't make a diagnosis of hypoactive diffuser or something if the flow is good because if a patient is able to uh, you know open the uh, urethra completely there won't be any rise of diffuser pressure because it will dissipate through the urethra now now tell the diagnosis and uh, dr diksha will give a uh, you know chocolate to the person who will give the di right diagnosis who 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 told overactive ek chocolate de do inko <laughs> so you can see it's not it's not with the cuff it's with the diffuser contraction that there is a leakage so it's a overactive bladder now tell anybody 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 sui chalo acha aage badhte hain ab batao what is the picture here वे सो चलो इतना आ गया तो मेरा आज लेक्चर सफल हो गया सो आई थिंक यू आर एबल टू मेक द डायग्नोसिस नाउ टेल मी वॉट इज देयर एंड नो नो समबडी हैज टू यू नो स्टैंड अप एट टेल नॉट इन दिस वे यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन सो यू कैन सी यस yeah you can see that there is a very good diffuser contraction it's actually more than uh, 20 it's uh, reaching up to the 80 90 cm of water despite of then there is not a good flow so it's not it we don't say retention it's a voiding dysfunction obstructive flow it's an obstructive flow and look at the emg now we have to look at the emg she is not able to relax her pelvic floor the urethra is not relaxed so this is the dag like, dysfunctional voiding could be the thing if there is no neurological disorder so diagnosis is dysfunctional voiding here you can see that she is not able to relax her so there is a role of urodynamics in these patients so that's the thing my take home message never jump on a diagnosis without thorough evaluation follow a systemic approach urodynamics has a great role to play in the diagnosis of bladder dysfunction but reading between the lines beyond convention is required so don't falsely just see one thing and make a diagnosis 
see the clinical parameters, see all the things and correlate. And biofeedback can be taught during the aerodynamic study and high quality evidence is lacking. Therefore, balance the art of science and treatment. Thank you so much.